Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Thursday, June 15th, 2023. And if you haven't already heard, I have a very important change notice to share with you about the Alaska Weather Show. As the National Weather Service program lead, I wanna let you know the last TV broadcast of Alaska weather, at least in the traditional sense, over the airwaves, as has been done since the late 1970s, is gonna be on Friday, June 30th. Starting on July 1st, the National Weather Service will be providing a modified web-based program, the program on a new YouTube channel. We will be moving on YouTube from the Alaska Public Media site to at NWS Alaska. And so you can go ahead and subscribe to this new YouTube channel early. We'll begin posting content there starting on July 1st. A public comment period is now open through July 30th, and if you would like to voice any concerns, comments, fond memories from the past, let us know what you'd like to see as additional weather information. How do you get your weather information, especially in rural parts of the state? You can provide these comments uh, to nws.service-changecomments at noaa.gov. And if you have any further questions, please reach out to carrie.hazley at noaa.gov and donald.more at noaa.gov. And certainly we thank you for your patience and understanding as we undergo this transition. Well, another thing too, if you like additional weather information, you can always go online to weather.gov. That is uh, the National Weather Service's online presence that brings you to a map of the continental US. You point and click anywhere on this map and it'll pull up uh, official forecast, watches, warnings, advisories, and much more for any location in the country, including Alaska, Hawaii, and our various territories. On the weather map this Thursday afternoon, we continue to have air quality alerts due to all of the Canadian forest fire smoke that spread down into the upper Midwest, portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. Further south, excessive heat along the Texas uh, Gulf Coast into Louisiana, and also severe weather. We have tornado watches, Oklahoma into central Texas, uh, flood watches as a result of heavy rainfall and severe weather yesterday back through areas of the deep south. There were hailstones as large as four and five inches in portions of Arkansas and Mississippi with that severe weather outbreak yesterday. Red flag warnings over southern New Mexico, frost advisories into northeastern Nevada. Here in Alaska, we still have the flood warning on the Sag River way up there above Dead Horse coming in off of the Brooks Range down through the eastern portion of the uh, North Slope. Uh, Dalton Highway between mile post 401 and 407 continue to be impacted. The Sag River did cause uh, some damage to the highway there due to the high uh, water levels due to the late season uh, snowmelt runoff. High water will continue across areas of the eastern Brooks Range, eastern North Slope, and the Koyukuk uh, River basins here into the weekend. So keep that in mind if you're going to be around any of the creeks or rivers. And there has been some minor damage reported to some of the infrastructure in some of these areas of, as the result of the high water. We have a gale force low pressure system in front currently working its way up into the central Gulf. It's going to bring wind and uh, periods of rain along the Gulf Coast and Panhandle, especially the rest of today through tonight into lingering into Friday. But conditions should begin to improve there Saturday into Sunday. And it's looking like a warmer weekend over the interior and spreading down into areas of South Central Alaska, as well as the Southwest interior. The South Central and Southwest Alaska has been very cool. It's been a very uh, slow uh, sp spring warm up here for, for, for all of us because it's, it's just been below normal temperatures and uh, a bit above normal precipitation. Well, in the interior, Fort Yukon, partly cloudy, 66 degrees as of uh, early afternoon. Temperatures there will be getting up uh, next couple of days into the 70s, at least a few spots in the interior could even flirt with the upper 70s to near 80 over the weekend. Further south, though, Craig, there in the southern panhandle, light rain early this afternoon, low clouds, going to get more in the way of some moderate 
part to some periods of briefly heavier rain expected for tonight. Temperatures there only in the lower uh, 50s with the cloud cover and rain. So the areas shaded in the uh, light grayish blue are special weather statements just to highlight the above uh, or high water levels expected on rivers and creeks within the Koyukuk River Basin and then along areas of the eastern um, Brooks Range and eastern North Slope and we have that uh, flood warning uh, for the Sag River uh, that may be extended beyond this evening because of the, the problems and the damage that has occurred along uh, stretches there of the Dalton Highway between uh, milepost 401 and 407. Fire danger has crept up in through the interior to very high in some places. The only thing keeping that from being a real threat is that we don't have a lot of wind. We don't have a bunch of lightning strikes to start new fires, so that's good news. And overall, looking at the fire weather outlook here going into the weekend, warmer weather is forecasted here through the weekend for a change. Uh, some scattered showers and isolated storms will moderate fuel dry, dryness, so they could just kind of tamp down some of the drier fuels. But the fine fuels dry quickly, so watch out if you're having any campfire uh, in any areas uh, this weekend. And the outlook, low to moderate fire activity is expected for the next week. By the end of June, activity should increase to near normal. We are going to start to see maybe a little warmer temperatures finally. And then looking farther ahead into next week, June 21st is the summer solstice for the Northern Hemisphere. That moment occurs, a point in the Earth's orbit around the sun at 6.58 a.m. Alaska Daylight Time. So at least the weather, uh, south central areas uh, will be warming this weekend into early next week. So get out and enjoy it. On the weather map, we do have uh, the moisture coming up with that low over the central Gulf. And uh, it's pretty, a pretty uh, decent slug of moisture to be lifting uh, north and northeastward. And it's going to impact areas along the Gulf Coast, especially the Panhandle into western portions of uh, coastal Britain. British Columbia could see some moderate to heavy rainfall. Across the interior, we have those popcorn cumulus clouds. With these cumulus buildups, there could be some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms next couple of afternoons. A weak trough, remnants of a front that's pushed into the west side of the state. Coldest air has come down along the eastern Bering Sea and then is now currently crossing through uh, the lower portion of the Alaska Peninsula. Some of this cooler air will be entrained within the backside of this uh, Gulf low, but otherwise, uh, at least temperatures, uh, as this low gradually weakens here over the weekend, it's going to eventually move southeastward, passing just south and southeast of Haida Gwaii uh, for Sunday night, Saturday night into Sunday, I should say. And that's going to allow a little warmer air ridging to build back into the interior, and that warmer air is going to press westward into areas of the southwest interior and south central. But before then, we're still going to have some scattered showers into Friday. Most of the steadier rain is going to be along the Gulf Coast, northeastern Gulf Coast, in through the Pan handle. Scattered shower, isolated thunderstorm possible along areas of the interior, especially along the south slopes there of the Brooks Range. And then uh, Saturday, the low begins to head southeastward and weaken. That is going to allow for at least a little better weather and some drying thanks to this ridge of high pressure at the surface nudging in and then ridge of high pressure in the mid levels of the atmosphere extending back through here will help uh, to dry and warm things out here across at least southern parts of the mainland. And uh, next little weather system will bring some unsettled weather to the Chuck GC Seward Peninsula northwestern coast as we go uh, later Saturday and into Sunday where temperatures there will average uh, below normal still uh, for this time of year but lows Friday morning will generally be in the 40s across south central and uh, in through the panhandle temperatures Friday afternoon will be cooler beneath the cloud cover and rain there uh, along areas of the panhandle back to the west could finally get back up around or a bit above 60 uh, Anchorage Bowl and flirting with 70 at Talkeetna 70 likely at McGrath and then temperatures come Saturday morning should generally be in the 40s a few spots near 50 and then temperatures Saturday afternoon are going to start to recover here back towards south central areas with any sun should have no trouble getting into the 60s a couple spots will be flirting with 70 over the weekend and certainly by next early next week here through the panhandle still some lingering showers and cloud cover uh, but conditions improving by later in the weekend and across the interior low will generally be in the 40s to near 50 along the Yukon River, still near freezing along areas of the uh, Arctic coast down to along the north side of the Seward Peninsula. And then uh, temperatures Friday afternoon looking at some 70s, uh, especially Fairbanks up toward the uh, Yukon Flats and even down toward Galena. 
And for Saturday morning, lows again generally in the 40s, but some reading is around freezing along the Arctic coast, down along areas of uh, the Bering Strait. So still cool there, but temperatures Saturday afternoon should once again get back up into the lower, maybe mid 70s. But with the heating, we expect some scattered showers, popcorn variety, maybe uh, even an isolated uh, rumble of thunder here. There, coolest temperatures Saturday afternoon will be along coastal areas of the Arctic and then down through the Chukchi Sea coastline to the Bering Strait. Across the Southwest, this is good news. You folks have had some really cool temperatures this spring, especially compared to last year. Going to get up into the 60s as we creep up the Yukon and Kuskokwim River basins, maybe 70 Friday afternoon at McGrath. Lows will be above freezing. And as we get into Saturday afternoon, we should see temperatures back up uh, 60-ish to maybe into the 60s, a little further up those river basins. Coolest temperatures, as always, along coastal areas. Good news here as we get around and past the solstice, June 21st through the 25th. Temperatures should start to average a bit above normal across south central, southeast interior, in through the panhandle, a little below normal across the northwestern half of the mainland. Precipitation will average below normal over the panhandle, so a little drier there, but maybe still a little wetter over areas of the mainland, including pockets along the Brooks Range north slope and back toward the lower Yukon uh, Basin. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hi, in your aviation weather, there are going to be four areas of concern. Low pressure out over the Gulf to start out there Friday. Uh, areas of IFR along the uh, Arctic coast, but low pressure is going to swing through with some unstable weather across the lower Chukchi Sea Seward Peninsula here this weekend. And then uh, as we uh, look across the mainland, uh, up through the middle upper Yukon Valley, some ridging building in back from Canada will help warm temperatures across this area, especially north of the Alaska Range as we get to go through the course of the weekend and then late in the weekend and early next week low pressure will be lifting out a series of lows will lift out of the North Pacific up into the Bering Sea uh, allowing for more of a south southwest uh, flow aloft pattern here over south central areas of the state which will also tend to help temperatures warm. Now by Friday afternoon scattered showers maybe even some isolated thunderstorms from areas of the southeastern slopes of the Brooks Range down through the Yukon Flats uh, on uh, along the Elkan border and even into the eastern half of the Alaska Range, northern Talkeetna Mountains. IFR should hold on to areas of the far northern Panhandle, as well as along uh, the Arctic and northwest coast and way out toward the central Bering and western Aleutians. For Saturday morning, we expect VFR conditions across much of the mainland and uh, still some IFR uh, occurring in areas of the northern Panhandle around Chilkoot and White, as well as over toward Hyder. And then uh, IFR conditions along the Arctic coast, uh, Chukchi Sea, back out toward the western uh, Bering. And for Saturday afternoon, we expect widespread VFR conditions and along with some warmer temperatures uh, for much of the mainland compared to what we've experienced the past week, even though some of these temperatures are still not going to be much above normal, but way better than what we've been experiencing here uh, for the past several weeks. So Anatovic Pass, VFR conditions could be some scattered cumulus buildups with a few showers, isolated thunderstorms, same thing, Attigan Pass for Friday afternoon. As we go south, uh, west arm of the Alaska Range, VFR expected Lake Clark and Merrill. Rainy Pass could see MVFR conditions. And then as we round uh, the central Alaska range into the eastern Alaska range, generally VFR conditions, but scattered uh, cumulus buildups could lead to a few showers and perhaps an isolated thunderstorm, not just at Windy, but Isabel and Mentasta passes as we go through uh, Friday afternoon and evening. Further south, Copper River Basin could catch a scattered shower, isolated storm. Tanita should see VFR conditions become MVFR. And Portage Pass will generally remain VFR on Friday, though, as you fly further east toward Prince William Sound in the Gulf Coast, you'll encounter MVFR conditions. And farther east of there, Chilkoot and right, White will remain socked in uh, beneath lower cloud cover and some precipitation with IFR conditions expected much of Friday. And looking at the freezing levels aloft, they are highest out over uh, the central eastern mainland above 6,000 feet. Coldest air is out over uh, from eastern Russia, Gulf 
off of Anadir down through St. Matthew, St. Paul at or below 2,000 feet. And then as we get back uh, south and southwest of the Aleutians, freezing levels rise from 10 to 12,000 feet. So there's warmer there. air off to the south and west. Icing potential will be greatest because of the low in the Gulf, the frontal system with the precipitation that has come into this area. Uh, we have deeper moisture and precipitation. So above 10,000 feet, the Panhandle, Northeastern Gulf. We could also see some pockets above 8,000 feet, considerable moderate icing along and just south of the Alaska Range. And then back toward the Bering Strait above 6,000 feet, the potential for some isolated moderate icing. Jet stream level winds, we are strongest at 30,000 feet. We have a jet core of around 120, 125 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula and south of the Gulf uh, in the North Pacific with two main areas of low pressure in the upper atmosphere. At mid-levels, 700 millibars, the low circulation clearly located over the Gulf. Strongest winds with that down across the North Pacific around 45 uh, to 55 knots. And then for 3,000 foot level winds, the low circulation there over the central Gulf, uh, strongest wind field uh, just south and southeast on the order of 40 to 50 knots. But we do have locally stronger winds along the north central Gulf uh, coast area there, upwards of uh, near 50 knots uh, circulating around that low. And then an area of winds out back toward the central Bering Sea of 40 to 45 knots from the southwest. So this will translate to an area for uh, some considerable moderate turbulence along areas of the north central Gulf coast extending into the panhandle as we go through the day Friday. Most of that turbulence should be confined uh, surface to 6,000 feet. Again, locally strong winds right there on the north side of the low and then some pockets of moderate turbulence expected in areas of the Alaska Peninsula back into the uh, eastern Aleutians, the surface to 4,000 feet. Howdy Starshines, Trace here. Next week on June 21st is the summer solstice. We use this longest day to celebrate our closest star, the sun. If you look at everything in our solar system and squished them together, that ball would be 99.8% the sun. It's huge, a million Earths could fit inside it. Yet, it's a fairly average main sequence yellow dwarf star. It's 10 times larger than small stars and hundreds of times smaller than big ones. But to us, it's everything. Energy produced in its core takes hundreds of thousands of years to get to the surface, but all that light and heat makes life on our planet possible. Today, watch a sunrise and enjoy the way the sun changes the wind, the clouds, and the animals around you. You can watch Jupiter rise too, or take in a Mars-Venus sunset, plus our moon with gorgeous Earth shine bathed in light reflected from the Earth. <sighs> Happy Day Star Day, friends. Keep looking up. also known as the white whale, lives in large groups and are unusual among whales. They have no dorsal fin, large bulbous heads, and they can actually swim backwards. To feed, they produce sound to find and hunt fish and invertebrates, and they use sound to communicate. They're also known as the canaries of the sea because they make such a diversity of noises. They make chirps and whistles and gurgles and trumpeting sounds. They just make all kinds of sounds. In the U.S., beluga whales live in the cold waters of Alaska, and there are five separate populations. Of those five, the Cook Inlet population is the smallest, and has declined by about 75%. Subsistence hunting may have contributed to this initial population drop, but this practice was regulated starting in 1999, with the last hunt in 2005. Still, the beluga population here has yet to recover. We listed Cook and the beluga whales as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act in 2008, and we had hoped that the population would start recovering, but we are still seeing a continued decline. And these beluga whales are only found in Cook Inlet, so if they go extinct, we don't think any other belugas will come back and populate this area. These whales spend most of their summer near Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, where threats to belugas are on the rise as the city grows. These may include diminishing food, habitat loss or destruction, pollution, toxins, and human-caused noise, which hampers their ability to feed and communicate. 
Researchers are trying to understand which of these threats may be impacting them most, but Cook Inlet is a tough place to work. It's really hostile for research. We have the strong tides, which makes it challenging for human safety, and we can't see through the water. It is very muddy, so we're pretty much limited to the part of the animal that breaks the surface of the water. And as a result, we have limited information about the specific population dynamics of Cook and the beluga whales. Up until recently, information has mainly come from annual aerial surveys from aircraft and boat or shore-based photo identification surveys that use unique markings to tell animals apart. Scientists also use passive acoustics to listen for belugas, but none of these methods can detect much information about their health. So it's really been a game changer with, with the whole species in the spotlight designation. We've gotten more resources within our agency. For instance, we're able to use a drone to collect some aerial imagery of belugas in the wild, and we're hoping to learn some information about the age classes, information about the health status. And probably the most important bit of information that we'll get out of that is we'll be able to identify the new calves. And we're hoping if we keep doing this every year, we'll be able to get an estimate of calf production every year that will tell something about how well the population is doing. We are also expanding upon our biopsy studies, hopefully to give us some information about sex, the individual's reproductive status, some genetic information, uh, some contaminant loads. Public and private partners are contributing as well. Some are looking at toxin levels in the whale's prey, while others are analyzing beluga teeth to learn about their age and past diet. Others monitor water quality and how belugas react to boats, and more check to see if their behavior changes with increased background noise. All of these findings will go toward developing effective recovery strategies for this population. As for what you can do, if you're out boating, give beluga space. Don't drive right up next to them. Stay about 100 yards away. If you're flying over them, just remember that you're putting noise into the water as well, and so stay at least 1,500 feet above them. Report a stranded beluga whale as soon as possible, and that's if they're dead stranded or live stranded. The amount of information that we can learn from these animals by responding to a stranding is monumental, and it will help our efforts to recover them. Together we can help beluga whales thrive in the dynamic waters of Cook Inlet. With continued research and good stewardship, we hope to see this population grow in the years to come. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, and we're entering summer solstice. We're just less than a week away, the highest sun angle of the year, and the ice continues to melt off now up into Arctic areas. We can see the open water increasing across the lower Chukchi Sea through the Bering Strait. Just a little bit of ice, barely uh, uh, traceable there uh, through parts of the northern Bering Sea and along some of the areas of eastern Russia. But with summer now arriving, uh, we expect that melt off to continue areas of the far north. Areas, uh, the ice also starting to break up and more in the way of some open areas of water sh showing even in the far north between Utkiadvik and Kaktovik, though. We've seen them more in the way of some openings there in the uh, Canadian Arctic coast. Just a few traces of ice left uh, within the vicinity of St. Matthew and northeast there of St. Lawrence Island. Well, we've had a, a gale force low in front to impact areas of the panhandle uh, through tonight, and winds will still be brisk, but coming down a little bit, they'll come down more on Saturday. South winds, 20, 25 knots. There could be some gale force gusts to 35 knots in Lynn Canal. And then for the outer uh, areas of the Gulf Coast, we expect south to southeast winds around 25 knots. So gusts could be uh, as high as 40 knots south of Yakutat with waves running uh, 9 to 12 feet. On Saturday, winds come down inner channels southeast to south winds, 10 to 15 knots, waves coming down to a couple of feet. And for areas of of the uh, outer coast, we expect south winds turning more easterly south of Gustavus through uh, Craig with waves around 10 feet. Winds will be a bit westerly, 10 to 15 knots in and outside of the Yakutat Bay with waves running 8 to 9 feet. Now across the northwestern Gulf on Friday, uh, winds will be variable within Prince William Sound around 10 knots. We expect south, uh, or rather west to northwest winds uh, at the entrance of Cook Inlet around 20 knots with 6, 7, 
thousand foot waves, and then generally southerly winds, uh, the length there of middle and upper Cook Inlet at 15 to 20 knots with waves four to five feet. For Saturday, winds come down further here over the northwestern Gulf. The uh, low pressure that was in the central Gulf will be heading southeastward, and winds become variable 10 knots off the Kenai and through Prince William Sound, but generally southwest to west 15 knots across Cook Inlet with waves running three, four feet. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, winds will generally have a westerly component, uh, west and northwest around 20 to 25 knots on Friday. Waves four or five feet on the North Pacific side and four to five feet on the Bering side. For Saturday, winds still around 20 knots out of the west-southwest across Kodiak Island, as high as uh, 30 knots uh, east of Chignik. And then generally west winds in the B Bristol Bay as high as 25 knots, but lighter, just 10 knots and variable north of Cold Bay. Waves three to five feet on the North Pacific side and four to six feet on the Bering side. Eastern Aleutians on Friday will have northwest winds 15 to 20 knots, variable winds 10 knots, central Aleutians, and then winds trying to go back to the south, southwest 15 knots there in the western Aleutians. And for Saturday, we're going to see a low pressure south of the Aleutians is going to begin to lift northward. So as that pressure gradient starts to tighten, easterly winds 20 knots, increasing as high as 30 knots south of Nikolsky and Atka. Waves uh, starting to build 6 to 10 feet on the North Pacific side uh, of the Aleutians. And then generally 3 to maybe 4 or 5 feet on the Bering side. Winds will generally be northwesterly uh, into Norton Sound, 20 knots there into uh, the Yukon Delta, and 25 knots Bristol Bay and uh, Kuskokwim Bays. And then on Saturday, uh, winds stay westerly, a component 20 knots into Kuskokwim and Bristol Bays, but turning southerly, as high as 25 knots southwest, uh, southwesterly there at uh, St. Matthew. But look for south-southwest winds 15 to 20 knots uh, off of the Yukon Delta into Norton Sound. And then for Friday, winds will be easterly along the Arctic coast 10 to 15 knots, but turning northerly uh, through the lower Chukchi Sea, coming inland westerly into Kotzebue Sea sound, but northerly through the Bering Strait at about 15 knots. And on Saturday, east winds continue around 15 knots along the Arctic coast, but more southerly through the lower Chukchi Sea and Bering Strait around 15 knots with waves running two to three feet. And a quick check of the weather map. Friday, we have low pressure over the central Gulf. So some of the stronger winds, uh, gale force and uh, small craft force winds here along the Gulf Coast and areas of the Panhandle. And then on Saturday, that area of low pressure will begin to move southeast out of the Gulf, and this is going to allow areas of the mainland to start to warm up again. Better weather returning for a change across south central and southwestern portions of the state. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank <laughs> you.